Enjoy the Goldilocks Productions presentation of the In the Psychic Flow Show with Carolyn Carey. Hi, everyone. Welcome to In the Psychic Flow. I am your host, Carol Ann Carey. I am the psychic medium of Sarasota, or SRQ as we refer to it. We have a very special show today. This show and this guest has been on my bucket list for like forever. And I feel like I can slide peacefully into the spirit world now. Janet uh, Janet Nahavik is with us. She is Reverend Janet Nahavik, and she has the become the pastor of the Journey Within Church, Pompano Lakes, New Jersey. She is very well-traveled, very well-known, and the author of two books, the Where Two Worlds Meet, and that is about your system and your techniques, and Through the Darkness, which is about your journey uh, from leaving your uh, time as a, as a Catholic, a Roman Catholic nun and experiencing your uh, abilities as a medium. Janet, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Oh, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. Wonderful oh, to thank be you. here. Thank you. Uh, the Journey Within dot com is your uh, you are the pastor there for, and the founder or a co founder yes. of that church. Mm-hmm. And that was a dream of yours. And Janet Nahavik dot com uh, is your personal website and I must warn our listeners that your reading list, your wait list for readings is uh, pretty extensive, right? About 30 months? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that's how popular you are. You're also, uh, I'm so impressed to have met you on a couple of occasions and to have received a gallery reading from you. It's really, everything came true. It was absolutely perfect. Uh, I couldn't believe it. It really did. Everything happened. You brought in my second husband, Rudy. I kind of hijacked the reading. I think you were really going somewhere else in the gallery, but I grabbed it (laughs) 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 because I'm selfish. And um, so it was a beautiful message, very evidential, and it all happened. So I wanted to thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. uh, You went from being a Roman Catholic nun uh, working and accepting and embracing your abilities as a medium. You saw things at the age of four. That's amazing. Now, when you stepped away from the convent, what happened then? How did you find the spiritualist movement? Um, When I had stepped away from the convent, I still wasn't sure what any of this was, you know. I, I knew of my abilities, but in religious life, I thought they were like mystical experience because lots of religious have had, you know, mystical experiences. They were out of the ordinary. Um, and after I left the convent, I, I met a medium. There was a woman, a friend of mine, who had a mutual friend who was a medium, and I got invited to uh, a circle one night. And I was really doubtful whether I should go to that, whether God would want me involved with that at all. Because I think I had a lot of the hang-up of the fears that the church had, you know, put upon all of this type of stuff. Um, uh, So that's how I kind of came into it. And it was quite an eye-opener for me. And I really had to spend some time discerning whether it was okay with God if I get involved with this, you know. Um, And I'd have to say over a period of time what I've come to find out is, you know, I sat in the common and talked to God, the saints, the angels, and asked them to talk back. And, uh, you know, all I do now is add grandma to the list, you know. So how, how, you know, anybody can find that offensive is just not intelligent anymore to me. So I had a lot of rational things in my mind that I had to come to peace with and some things that I needed to stand up for um, because I really do believe it's as simple as that. Why can't we talk to God, the saints, the angels, and just add grandma to the list? Um, right. You know, right. that is the jump. Your work uh, was introduced to me by um, Shauna Spalding St. Clair, who passed away yes. last uh-huh. year. Wonderful woman. Yes. she was. Uh, I had the privilege of uh, some personal tutoring from her for a platform. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, I really enjoyed her, and I was sorry to, to she finally lost her battle, uh, mm-hmm. her health battle. But um, are there people that you hear from like that in your meditations or in your own spiritual life that could pass on anything to us? Um, I've not heard from Shauna, um, I have to be honest in that. Occasionally in a class or through my meditation, someone ancestrally or somebody that was a teacher may come through with something uh, because I'm kind of always listening, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. for guidance for my own life and my own decisions. So stuff certainly comes across, but it's usually, mm, you know, I would say it's on a personal level, but um, most recently um, I felt called, as, as you know, to get involved with the Hydesville Schoolhouse and then a new spiritualist church up upstate New York. And I think that's a bigger call to me. I think it's something that the spiritual world has asked me to get involved with. So you I definitely were, hear from them. You were um, driving by in that part of New York by where spiritualism started and you saw this historic schoolhouse. Is that correct? Well, uh, a few, quite a few years ago I was asked, did I want to buy a schoolhouse in Ann Gaiman, Reverend Ann Gaiman, who was a phenomenal medium, was involved with it. And I really didn't think twice about it at that point. And um, we had just finished the World Congress of Spiritualists, and I was at the Hydesville Cottage in uh, Hydesville, New York, which is Newark, New York, um, where spiritualism and modern-day uh, communication with the other side began. And I was praying there about, you know, I had been looking for a retreat house. And a couple signs came to me that day. Uh, above me in the sky, two of those planes that kind of let off that gas behind them made a big X in the sky right over there. Wow. So that was my first sign. And then um, a little bit of time went on, and again, I was approached. Um, no one else was approached. Would I buy the schoolhouse? The girl who owned it wanted to dedicate it to spiritualism. She never was able to raise the funds to do it. And that if I didn't take it on, she really thought it would just become an antique store or bar or something. And I prayed a lot about it, and I got a lot of signs that I was to do this. So, you know, I kind of think it's to bring a new wave of energy through that area where it all began. So, That's um, beautiful. Um, yeah. That is absolutely beautiful. And if anyone does want to make a contribution, do they do that through the Journey Within website? Sure, they could just go to the main page at the Journey Within and you'll see the schoolhouse there. So, you know, I just found out the bricks, uh, just to do the bricks for the schoolhouse are going to be upwards of $69,000. So we finished the roof. Um, oh, and we great. we the windows up on the second floor. So the first round of work got done, but now this outside piece, we've been told, is really necessary to do next, and it's a big chunk, but, you know. We weren't led where we couldn't accomplish it, I have no doubt. So. Right. Well, you uh, hadn't originally anticipated the journey within church either, and that came about. I listened to your story about that. I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. that was a, a miracle in itself, right, uh, yeah. how spirit works. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I have a lot of faith that this schoolhouse, historic schoolhouse project will also come about. When you... When I, uh, uh, I'll Go just ahead. mention, too, while I was up there and we had decided we would take on the schoolhouse, I just decided to Google, I wonder if there's any churches around here because there's not a spiritualist church where it all began. And oh. lo and behold, there was a church for sale, a real church, so now the journey with the north uh, will be dedicated on Hinesville Day, March 31st of this year. And we'll be oh, that's opening beautiful. and running the spiritualist church in the town where it all began. So it's really exciting. Oh. That is beautiful. I was going to ask you about that. Um, well, you had you were an overseas tutor for the prestigious Arthur Finley College in Stansted, England. Uh, that is quite an honor to attend yes. uh, that school, and you are a tutor uh, with them. Is there? I had thought I had read on your website there was a difference in the spiritualism in the UK and the spiritualism in the US. Is that correct? I don't think there's a difference in the spiritualism. The National Association of Churches in this country is a big organization, and both of them stand for continuity of life. I think the difference to me with the British 
uh, mediumship was that what I observed at the college was it was much more evidential. And right. that if I was going to get involved with spiritualism and mediumship, I needed to do it at a very high standard. Um, and that's where I, what I saw in England and at the time was not seen here. I think it's beginning to change here in America now, though. And, and I'm glad to hear that as well. We have had um, many uh, UK uh, British mm-hmm. mediums come, Scottish mediums, as you know, and from yeah. all over at um, the Sarasota Center of Light, where I trained. And mm-hmm. they really added uh, a phenomenal base to our education because they do things a little different over there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I found it quite interesting. They're always uh, wonderful, as you are. You're very well respected and internationally known. Um, what kind of advice do you give to trying to get that evidence? Um, is it asking for more from spirit? Is it um, the way you work with guides? Or do you have a, a form that they fill out in the spirit world? This is what I need. But what would be your advice on getting more evidence? more evidence into your Uh, reading. I'm a big believer in we are dealing with an intelligence on the other side and that um, once you realize that, that, you know, um, I I truly believe you can choose to be the type of medium you want to be and that we should reach for a very high standard. Gordon Higginson did that. He had a very high standard of what was acceptable. Amazing. Amazing you know, the work. first time I went to England, I had a practice in America. It was good enough. You know, I could have left it that way. You know, I met a teacher over there who said, you know, you give me five years, I'll straighten you out. I could have ignored it and come back home and pretended I didn't hear that, but I saw a caliber of mediumship that I wanted to strive for. Um, so I was willing to do the work. Um, mediumship is an intense process of involvement um you know um and i think the other thing is um within spiritualism and and within my beliefs it's a spiritual practice um i think we're seeing too much of the commercialization of of what i believe is a sacred process what do you think of um this may be an uncomfortable subject. I was watching some YouTube videos of other mediums I had not seen previously and uh, bringing in like uh, JFK and Jackie Kennedy and things like that. I mean, I'm sure that's possible. What do you think of that? that, I think unless they actually know you, they're not going to turn up. So I think, you know, unless JFK is a friend of, mine or a friend of my sister's or is trying to get to someone that's close to me, the chances of those famous people coming into your readings are probably zero to nil. The only way I think that would happen is if you were trying to complete a research project and you could get their you know, attention to it from an intelligent place. But I think most of the people who claim to be bringing through all these famous people are clear delusional, and there's no reality basis to it. I love that word. Uh, I think that was the first time I heard it was from you. Um, (laughs) And it's so true because it's so easy to fall into that trap. Mm -hmm. Um, But because of great teachers like Shauna and yourself, I found uh, a sole purpose for myself uh, working with grieving families, and that's what I prefer to do uh, with families that have lost someone and want to make the connection. Your readings, are any of them, I was watching a video where you had, did mention with uh, a gentleman on the Moore Show from the ARE, Edgar Casey Foundation, do people come to you for advice you had mentioned? Are they coming for spiritual counseling as well? Um, I do have that. I'd have to say probably half my practice is um, people who are, are discerning about decisions they're making for their personal life or maybe in crises. And um, I'm very comfortable with that. Gordon Higginson said, you know, the the grieving mother who needs to hear from a child is no different than a grieving mother whose, you know, house has just been repossessed and she's in dire circumstances and, and really wondering what to do next, you know. As long as we're in service to our client and the spirit world, um, 
the needs might be different, but, you know, the um, compassion, the healing, um, you know, just comforting of a soul, regardless of the situation, is what we're called to do, I have to say, and that's why the integrity level of it is so important. So in a case like that of the lady losing her home, is um, I have found this as well, that spirit will come in, uh, spirit loved one will come in and maybe comment on that situation. Or as we know, they're always bringing hope, love, and encouragement to us. Is that what you find as well? It's not a psychic work as much as it is uh, a spiritual mm-hmm. I don't know what, what you would call it, a spiritual conversation about how to move forward? No, that's not how I find it at all. Um, I've developed my abilities to the level of respect of people like Nostradamus or Edgar Cayce, mm-hmm. who had no problem with seership and prophecy, much like the oracles. So okay. I do not go to the spirit world or you know, to their mom to talk about it, although she may comment on it. Um, I go into a process of, uh, you know, my seership and prophecy with that. Okay. So you're okay with that. That's great. Yes, okay. Well, some people, you know, they they break away from that psychic part or that seeing part or prophecy, as you call, saying it's not really part of mediumship. But you find some, like you, I've, you find a lot of people that really need spiritual counseling and they really want to know. Mm-hmm. Um, am I going to get the guy? Am I going to get the job? Am I getting a divorce? How's my son going to make out? Um, a lot of these things in mediumship or whatever you want to call it, uh, seeing I would say prophecy. that is not mediumship. That's mediumship, not mediumship is for the proof of continuity of life. If someone comes to me to ask about their own life, I engage in a different tool, which, you know, I don't want to be the psychic that's got her hand in a window with a flashing light. Right, I want to develop my abilities to the point of, you know, Edgar Cayce, the sleeping prophet, or the Oracle of Delphi, you know, and and that in itself is a deep commitment and a process of unfoldment that can be, um, you know, generated in us, you know, if we put the commitment and the time and the dedication into that process of unfoldment. So it's definitely very different than mediumship. Right, right. Two different skills, two different uh, abilities, and not everybody wants to speak to dead grandma. They, no, they want to know some practical true. applications. <laughs> well, a few years back, eight years ago, when everything was falling out, people were losing their homes and jobs. It was a scary time on the planet, and... You know, for the church door to open and people walked in one after another because their life was in crises, that's a, a deep respect for me that they would be willing to come and sit with me and share the deepest parts of their lives with me, you know. That was reserved for priests. That's reserved for people, you know. That's such an integrity place that someone would allow you into the deepest aspects of their life, you know. So same same thing as mediumship it's a sacred thing of you know soul to soul communication you know but for a different reason yeah beautifully put thank you for explaining that because sometimes i wonder why people call me uh for you know when i primarily speak to dead people but they will call me for those things too and i can i give them what i get you know and i Mm -hmm. and i try to but a lot of it is counseling You know, um, I think they know what they need to do, but I think they need reassurance that they can do that. And uh, I agree with you 100%. So I'm very glad to have that straightened out (laughs) by you. Do you feel that uh, your new location in New York, I grew up in New York State. I was born in Yonkers and grew up in Mm -hmm. Westchester County. So my path kept crossing uh, the spiritualist movement and mediumship every state I went into, and I find that kind of unique. So I'm a little bit familiar with New York State. Would this be this location in Hydesville? Is that where uh, Journey Within 2 is going to be or Part 2? That is where Journey Within 2 is. It, we have the site. It's, it's being dedicated and opened on uh, the auspicious day of March 31st. 
which Very is nice. the anniversary of spiritualism, and uh, there'll be a couple British mediums over. But I think the significance of the area is that part of New York State was called the Burnt Over District. It's well documented for that because right. a lot of uh, spiritual revolution has come from that area. Um, I'm a big believer that out of the area, which is kind of the source, um, more revelation will come. So it's a pretty powerful area, and, you know, that can only happen where that is. You can't move that somewhere else. It's because of the odd dynamics of, you know, what they did with the lock system and the water and the ley lines of that area. So it's a pretty powerful place. So I'm very excited for, you know, the training and the classes that will happen there because it's an aspect of power that is unique to there. That's beautiful. Um, I do believe there is some so much with the uh, Native American culture and uh, the formation. The there's nothing prettier than upstate New York. Um, the trees, everything holds such a beautiful spiritual significance. So I agree with that. What um, plans would you have? What kind of people would you be inviting? Would you be inviting international guests there or students there? Yes, it's already, um, they'll be within the next couple of weeks uh, online. There's a whole program set for the new uh, places. The Healing Temple, which we're working on, which is the actual schoolhouse, um, you know, until I raise, you know, all the money to restore that, that's a work in progress. Um, but as soon as we can get that up and running, that will be a healing temple um, for groups of students as well. Um, but the church... Um, it's already set in motion that the uh, our overseas guests will be teaching there, as well as local strong American mediums. And we're really keen to develop a local group of mediums and healers that are from that area because we know they're there. Um, there just hasn't been a, a, a group that has owned a building. Um, but, you know, a few years back uh, in Palmyra, New York, there was a spiritualist group that was there, you know, I think it's disbanded, but we know they're in the area, so I'm sure they're going to come forward. Yes, you know, I'm sure they're going to be welcoming you with open arms to the uh, and come to the Temple of Peace, which I believe is what you're calling that location. Mm-hmm. When um, you teach, and I'm sure you're asked this all the time, and I've seen your workshops, when you teach, you are really uh, bringing forward, correct me if I'm wrong, the individual's uniqueness and and difference in connecting would that be true it's not cu- uh, cookie cutter work no because we're not cookie cutter people so there's a very unique personality to each person so we really try and bring the essence of that personality forward for each communicator that steps forward so everybody's uniquely different and how long does it usually take uh, I know it's individual but how long does it usually take someone to be proficient enough in your eyes, your students? It, I would say years. A year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, years. Oh, years, Multiple yeah. years. Mm-hmm. And that's I think different it takes levels, you that right? Long. I think it takes you that long to, you know, if you're the violin and the spirit world has to learn how to work with you in communication, it takes a good process of uh you know, that unfoldment for that to happen. Someone may be born naturally gifted, but it's still this relationship with this intelligence that the other side of the cooperation of how to work together at the best level they can, you know. So I I, I think you can't rush that. I think it's, you know, a process. Um, And um, the people I respect... an ongoing evolution, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and a beautiful one, a beautiful mission to have. Um, mm-hmm. I want to just reiterate your contact information, um, JanetNahavik.com, or Janet at JanetNahavik.com. You can email you, uh, your website, JanetNahavik.com, uh, the Journey Within Church dot com, and dot org. dot org. I apologize, yeah. and That's anything okay. else special coming up uh, for you that we should know about? I think the Besides biggest thing that. is the, the opening of the Journey Within North, as it will be called, starting on March 31st, and the incredible 
energy of what's going to happen with the uh, school, historic schoolhouse where the Fox sisters used to go to school because, um, you know, I just think it's incredible. So, um, and, and I really do believe that spiritualism began here, made its way over to England. Uh, England got strong. America went down. Yeah. I really think America is on its way back up um, because there's really good mediumship starting to evolve here in this country. Uh, oh, I'm glad you know, to there's hear still that. A lot of, there's still a lot of crap for no, no other way to say that. Uh, yeah. But there's some really strong mediums really working hard at their development. Um, so I really do think across the country there's a strong group of mediums really uh, beginning to work. Well, you are certainly doing your part uh, in New Jersey and New York, so I want to thank you for that, and thank you for spending time with us. I know you have a very busy schedule. Uh, Thank you, Janet, really, for coming on. I really appreciate you and your books and your work and your teachings, your YouTube videos, your website, everything on there. God bless. I am just so thrilled to be able to speak with you today, and I'll speak to you in the future. Thank you very much. It was my honor to be with you. Oh, God bless. Thank you so much. You are, you, my bucket list is complete now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Janet Nahabak, for being with us today. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in to listen to this special podcast. Uh, it's been a delight to speak with uh, Reverend Janet Nahabak and uh, learn all about spiritualism and her projects for the future. Uh, God bless and have a good day. Thank you, listeners. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed the show. 